This is Mr. Magnifico and this video is the beginning of something exciting. I've managed to get my hands on a bunch of Segway balance boards or hoverboards as some of you may call it. Now I know what you're thinking, these are nothing new or exciting. But let me tell you, they've dropped in price like crazy lately, especially if you don't mind getting them in a non-working condition. In most cases, the motherboards are faulty, but guess what, the batteries and the motors are still functioning just fine. Although, I must admit, I don't trust those batteries very much. However, the motors can be used for countless projects. So without any further ado, let's begin. Now the first thing you need to do is crack open these bad boys and get inside. It's super easy, so don't worry, all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver and you're good to go. Start by unscrewing every screw that you see on the casing. These are at the bottom and they're about 10 on each side. And then using the same Phillips screwdriver, unscrew everything else. Once you have successfully unscrewed all the pieces, simply detach all the cables one by one. Again. There's loads of them, but it's an easy task. Removing the screws for the mortar will require a bit of elbow grease and some serious determination as they are tightly fitted for safety reasons. For this, you will need an Allen key. Now getting the mortar out is just the beginning. We need something to control them. To control them, we're going to use this e-bike controller, which is a 36 to 48 volt, 350 watt controller. These controllers come with their own pre-fitted connectors, which are no good to us. So we're going to snip them off and attach our own. And because we've taken apart the Segway and salvaged all the parts, we don't even need to buy an XT60 connector. We can use this. The female XT60 connector will be connected to the power input cables of the controller. Now as you will know, the thick black cable is the negative power cable and the thick red cable is the positive power cable. But this controller has a secondary red cable which acts as a switch. So if this is not connected, the controller will not work. You can add a switch here or you can bypass it like I am doing in this example. Thank you. 
Next, adding the heat shrink tubing seals the deal and the connector has now been upgraded to an XT60 connector. In addition to the power cable, the motor and the controller also have hole sensors, so the connector for this has to be changed too. The hole sensor uses five different colored cables, but luckily these colors match the ones that the motor uses as well. So we can just get the male connector from the salvage cables and soldering it onto the controller cables, making sure that we match the colors. Once again, the job is complete when all the heat shrink tubes have been applied. And with that, the controller is now ready to be powered up and connected to the motor. And now to test that everything is working fine, we are going to connect the whole sensor connector and the three bullet connectors. These three are the throttle cables, they need to be colour matched as well. All that's left to do is plug in the battery, twist the throttle and we're off. Thank you for watching, please show your support by commenting on what you'd like to see done with these motors and join me in future videos by hitting the subscribe button.